start off by giving the audience an introduction to yourself. Good afternoon, Ainsley. So nice to see you again. I'm Ruth Kristopolsky. Um, I've had the wonderful opportunity and have been blessed to work in healthcare for more than 30 years, um, primarily at the intersection of where healthcare is financed and where it's delivered. And I've had um, the, the, the chance to lead and grow teams that have used data and information to improve the value and outcomes of the patients and the communities that we've served in healthcare. I currently serve as the president of Iron Health Solutions at Providence Health, which is a purpose-built services and technology platform company, um, serving providers, health plans, um, payers, and other risk-bearing entities as they move forward um, on their journey and value in healthcare. So glad yeah. to be here. Yeah, I'm so glad to have you back. Um, Ruth was previously on our Women's Health Tech Wednesday, so it's so glad to have you on the symposium. And getting right into it, you know, how can organizations determine the optimal quantity of data needed without compromising on data quality for effective decision making? Yeah, and as I've listened this morning um, to all of the other presenters that have talked about both data quantity and accessing data, as well as to, to quality, this is a really important question. And often we think, you know, more is better. So let's get as much data as possible and then we'll figure out what to do with it. But I think in the healthcare space, we need to think about better is better. So how do we set out at the beginning and answer and understand what are our objectives? clearly define them, and then what is the most effective and efficient way um, to get the data that we need in order to um, complete the intervention that we're trying to do or to answer the question that we're asking. And I'll give you an example. So I have had the wonderful opportunity to participate in multiple EHR implementations going way, way back to the very first one that I did in 1999. And there was this belief that if we just hook all of the EHR uh, data together and put it in one place, right, it would help us take better care of patients. And the reality is the cost and the complexity of doing that, while it's possible, um, is probably not as um, uh, ROI uh, uh, producing as, as we need in healthcare. So I think starting with um, what objectives do we have um, what data do we need in order to drive, um, you know, the interaction that we need to have with the patient and our clinician, right, in real time should be uh, what we focus on when we're thinking about what, what we want to do with data quality over, over data quantity. Uh, absolutely. I mean, so how does that having a well-defined problem statement impact the success of data-related initiatives within an organization? Why is it important to start off with defining that problem from the beginning? Right. The two hardest areas, I believe, um, in healthcare, um, particularly as you're delivering healthcare and paying for paying for healthcare, um, is on the provider side and on the patient side. Right. And so um, strong, a strong data governance program, and that was mentioned by a number of, of folks early on, um, that clearly outline um, um, what, again, what your objectives are that include voices across all of healthcare, right? Often I have the opportunity to talk to really, really smart people who are doing really, really cool things um, from the technology space that have never engaged a clinician, right? And don't understand the workflow and, and don't understand how the patient interacts with the physician, right? And, and so you end up in a, in a place that, um, that, that that's not where you wanted to end. So I think, you know, to be successful, you need a strong data governance program um, that uh, includes a multitude of voices and then a roadmap that is very clear on where you want to go and you need to revisit it often, right? Often we put data governance uh, programs in place, we develop a roadmap and then no one looks at it and 24 months later, you know, you've kind of veered off the path. And so revisiting the roadmap to ensure that you're moving in the direction that you thought you wanted mm -hmm. to move in it is, is really important. No, no, absolutely. And that's good to, to point that out because definitely I feel like we often we either set goals for ourselves, you know, just in general and personal and work and then don't really revisit that later. And so we don't really accomplish much. So it's definitely important to, like you said, plan it out and then revisit it consistently to make sure you're still on the right track. 
And and going kind of more back to the, the topics of the quantity versus the quality of data, what do you think are the potential downsides of organizations solely focusing on just increasing the quantity of data without really paying attention to the data quality? Well, I mean, and we heard from several of the, the speakers earlier today. Um, you know, the very first thing I, I think that's in jeopardy when we're focusing on quantity versus quality is the potential impact on trust, right? Mm -hmm. Trust by the clinician or trust by uh, a patient when um, the, the data points us in the wrong direction or suggests uh, a, a next step that's not correct. And so, and and that trust is hard to gain in the first place and it's it's even more difficult uh, to, to rebuild. So I would say that first and foremost, trust um, uh, is a is an output of good data quality um, and building trust is a is an output of good data quality. I also think if we're just really practical and we start to think about the cost, so the mm -hmm. acquisition cost of data, the 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 keeping cost and storing cost of data, um, as well as the the cleansing cost of large um, uh, areas of data are are hugely uh, uh, impactful, right? And so we need to think about that. The final kind of point um, is also. Um, you know, the risk of having lots of data that we don't need that we can't use, right? We're, we're talking about people's, you know, personal and private information, including, you know, sensitive information about um, their interactions with healthcare. And so I think we need to be extremely thoughtful as we're, you know, gathering emerging large data sets and ensuring that we're protecting um, you know, the, 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 the privacy at, and the, you know, the sensitivity of that data. Absolutely. And, and I, I wanted to get your opinion on this because, you know, we have a, a large part of our audience is startups, specifically within the digital health, um, you know, community. So how do innovative startups that have these promising solutions, um, they often sometimes struggle to seamlessly integrate into an established ecosystem within industries like healthcare. So how can we kind of, how can they eliminate that struggle and, and be able to more seamlessly integrate within the current existing healthcare ecosystem? Yeah, I mean, I think the incumbents in the current health um, IT ecosystem are are, are extremely um, uh, embedded and um, and uh, uh, not necessarily always as inviting um, to some of the really thoughtful um, and innovative um, additional technologies that are out there. Um, and so I usually, um, as I'm talking to um, startup organizations, I, I usually um, point to three areas, right? One is you need to understand um, the difference between the person who's using the technology and who's paying for it. Usually, many times in healthcare, that's not the same. And so understanding kind of the financial construct um, mm -hmm. in which you're working is really important, right, to build your business case and to promote a business case to the healthcare entity that you're talking to. Um, I think the second really is the political and the change management environment. Um, healthcare is um, extremely slow to change. I, I, again, I scare myself sometimes when I think back over the last three decades on where I thought we would be and kind of where we are. Um, but the political and the, the change environment's really important um, to understand. And then finally, the regulatory compliance and, and, and other kind of, you know, uh, more structured framework is very different than other industries. So making sure that you under, you know, understand both regulatory and legal um, complexity in healthcare is important for a startup. Um, the final thing I would say is also how do you fit in, right? Mm -hmm. Um, the workflow for the clinician and how do you engage the patient is really important. Um, I, I was listening to something and, you know, we've, we've spent billions of dollars on digitizing healthcare data, you know, over the last three decades. Um, and yet we're less productive and we have uh, clinical teams um, who are uh, burnt out from the work that they're doing uh, which I do believe some of the technology that we're using has added to. And we have patients who are co really confused by what we provide them because it's not uh, cohesive from a user experience standpoint. And so, um, you know, I think thinking through that more larger ecosystem lens is, is, is vitally important as we move forward. 
No, no, absolutely. And thank you so much for sharing um, not only your valuable insights, but also your experience with us today, Ruth. Thank you again for your time. And I look forward to talking to you more in the future. Great. Thank you so very much. Have a great day.